In Guilds of Sue, goals is everything. You need it for equipment, fashion, cute mount skins, and also for high art in the guild hall. <laughs> gold is extremely useful in this game. Almost everything in the game will earn you goals in one way or another. But let's say you want to get rich quickly. What are the best and fastest ways to farm goals? I recently made it my personal quest to definitively answer this question. On my stream, I spent the past week trying out pretty much every popular gold farm, and I meticulously recorded exactly how much gold each of them made me. And now I am here with an extremely algorithm-friendly video, the top 10 gold farms in Guild Wars 2. We're gonna talk about each farm's pros and cons, how they work, and how much gold you can roughly expect to earn if you were to sell everything. Be aware, this list is going to get a little bit subjective, but really, all the farms in this video are pretty awesome. Let's get started. Number 10. The Silver Race, also known as Reba. For quite a long time, if you wanted to farm goals in Go to Stew, the Silver Race were the place to do it. They really should have just called them the Gold Race. I apologize. Nowadays, the Silver Race has been surpassed by lots of other gold farms. It will still make you roughly 20 golds an hour, which is not bad at all, but it's not really amazing either. For this meta, you will cycle through four forts. Red, Indigo, Blue and Amber, or you can also use the catchy name, Reba. You capture all of these forts, defend them and upgrade them, until you get to fight some champions and then finally a big boss, Vinroth. After Vinroth is dead, you can go to the Tangled Labyrinth to open bolts. Make sure to open the big bolt, it has a lot of loot. After that's done, it is time for the chest farm. On an organized map, a commander will usually dig up the chests for everyone with shovels, after which you can open them with bandit keys. You just follow the commander and open all of the chests. You get bandit keys as it drops throughout the meta, but you can also buy them from the vendor with bandit crests. Make sure to do the chest farm, this is a huge part of the value that you get from the silver waste. Silver waste is a solid gold making method. It is easy to get into, but it can also get a bit repetitive. Let's move on to our next farm. Number 9. Weekly Raids I love raids in Guild Wars 2. It's one of those things that I would be doing just for fun, even if it didn't earn me any goals. Fortunately though, raids do earn you goals, but it's only once a week. When you're first learning raids, you probably won't be making much. If learning a boss takes 4 hours, getting a couple of gold at the end really doesn't feel amazing. However, once your group starts one-shotting bosses, it really becomes worth your while. Once a week, I clear the 4 Heart of Forge raids on my stream. This might seem a bit spooky if you haven't done raids before, but Power Creep has made these 4 raid wings a lot easier than they used to be. An experienced raid group can clear these 4 wings in about 2 hours, which will earn you roughly 50 gold. That's 25 gold an hour, which is pretty good. The Pelvic Fire Raids are a little bit more difficult. If your group is skills, definitely do those raids too to make even more goals. But if you're new, starting with just the Heart of Forge Raids is a great option. If you're interested in getting started with raids, definitely give my raids guys a watch. In that video, I talk about how you can prepare your character, find a group and more. I find raids a super fun way to make goals. It doesn't really feel like farming to me. Usually I'm just having a blast killing bosses with my friends, and then at the end I suddenly have a bunch of goals. Number 8. Drizzlewood South our next gold farm is the Drizzlewood Coast map from the Icewood Saga. Drizzlewood is actually a lot like the Silver Race, but in my opinion it is a lot more fun and it also makes you more goals. On this map, two lanes progress through a war zone. You capture bases, defend them and also upgrade them. To make the most goals, most commanders will constantly swap between both lanes so that they can do events on both sides. Once the south part of the meta is done, there are no shovels and chests like in the Silver Waste. Instead, champions will spawn, which the group will go kill. These champions drop really profitable chests, and opening those will require keys. You can get keys from events, or you can also buy them with war supplies at the map entrance. In Drizzlewood, you will also earn char commendations, which basically function like a PvE reward track. As you earn commendations and progress through the track, you get different items. The best reward track is dependent on current TP prices, but while I was recording this video, the Iron Legion track was the most profitable. 
After Drizzlewood South is done and the champions have been killed, there's also a second meta, Drizzlewood North. North isn't quite as fast for making gold, so many players will just only do South. With Drizzlewood South, I was making about 27 gold an hour, which is really, really good. Personally, I find Drizzlewood A a lot more fun than the Sulfur Wastes. Stuff in this map just happens a lot faster and it doesn't feel as repetitive. I can still only stomach one Drizzlewood at a time though, so if you're feeling a bit burned out, definitely check out the other farms in the video. Number 7. Dragonfall. Dragonfall is the final map of Living World Season 4, and it is a lot like the Silver Waste and Drizzlewood. You kill stuff, get keys, and it's also really profitable. In Dragonfall, you do events around the map to progress the free camps to higher tiers. Once all camps are tier 4, it is time for the big boss fights. After the boss fight is done, there is a champion run, just like in Drizzlewood. Opening the chests once again requires keys, but you can't buy those this time. You can only get them from doing events. The general idea of farming Dragonfall is doing the camp events a bunch to get keys, and then after you do the boss fight and the champion run to use the keys. If you upgrade all sectors fully from tier 1, you will often have enough keys for two champion runs, and that gets you a, a lot of goals. Oh, also, a large part of your income from Dragonfall comes in the form of Volatile Magic. You can use Volatile Magic to buy trophy shipments, which gets you lots of expensive materials. If you're farming Dragonfall, definitely don't forget to buy these trophy shipments. Also, make sure to consume the Mistborn modes that you get for even more Volatile Magic, and thus more trophy shipments. When I was testing Dragonfall, I did one run where I upgraded the camps, and then I did the final boss fight and champion run twice. This ended up being about 30 gold an hour, which is very similar to Drizzlewood. Number 6. Dragonstorm. Now, let's take a look at a different type of meta. Dragonstorm. Dragonstorm isn't some big farming map that you can farm for hours, but instead it is an instant meta that you can do really quickly for a nice chunk of change. Time to talk about Dragonstorm while dodging all the spoilers. You take down some uh, bosses, press F a couple times and you get stuff. That's it. Dragonstorm is usually done in about 15 minutes, but it will earn you roughly 7.5 gold. That is 30 gold an hour with like super low effort. You can only do Dragonstorm once a day, but it is really fast, so you should definitely consider adding it to your daily routine. Once every two hours, there is a public instance that you can join from the Eye of the North, but you can also choose to form your own private group. 10-man private Dragonstorm with a good team composition is a very popular way to do Dragonstorm, because it's usually faster than the public version. You'll see groups for this pop up on the Strike LFG pretty often. Number 5. Strike missions. If you're unfamiliar, strike missions are a lot like raids, but instead of being a big raid wing, they consist of standalone bosses and they're also a lot easier than raids. So if raids still seem a little bit spooky to you, strikes might be more in your comfort zone. There are currently three different categories of strikes. Icewood Saga Strikes, End of Dragon Strikes, and Secrets of the Obscure Strikes. Icewood Saga Strikes give you really nice rewards every single day, and they're also really easy. Most groups will skip Gold War and Forging Steel, and if you do that, you can run through the 5 remaining strikes in about 15 minutes. That will earn you a very fast 9-ish goals. 9 goals in 15 minutes is really fast. Once a week, you can also open this chest in the Eye of the North after clearing them to get even more rewards. The End of Dragons and Secrets of the Obscure Strikes have a different reward structure. You get rewarded for your first clears of the week. And besides that, there is also one daily EOD strike and one daily solo strike. Many people choose to do the Ice Boot Saga strikes every day, and then they will also add the EOD daily and the Sodo daily. This will get you all daily rewards, and if you do this every day, you will eventually pick up all the weekly EOD and Sodo rewards too. If you don't like to do strikes every day, you can also run through them all and get all of the weekly rewards in one sitting. That is also really nice goals. 
The last time I did this, I made about 35 goals in a little bit over an hour. If you're looking for a real challenge, you can also choose to do the EOD and Soda Strikes on challenge modes. Then you will make even more goals, but be warned, these challenge modes are very tough and usually require many hours to learn. Number 4. Rifts Farming Wow, it is a brand new gold farm! With the latest expansion, ArenaNet introduced Rifts Farming. You can use your new Heart of the Obscure to see where the closest rift is. Once you get to the rifts, you will need to kill some enemies, open the rifts, kill a boss and then close the rifts. It is a pretty enjoyable, mindless grind. Once you finish their rifts, you can instantly go chase down the next one with zero waiting around. Rifts don't actually seem to give a lot of gold at first glance. Instead, you will get these essences. These are used for crafting the new upcoming legendary armor, so if you want that, definitely keep these. But if you don't care about the armor, you can actually make gold with these. When you open a rift, you can choose to put down a motivation item. This is like a bait for the demon, and if you use one, your essence rewards will go up significantly. Tier 2 and tier 3 rifts even require someone to use a bait to open them, otherwise no boss will even spawn. Long story short, a lot of people want these motivations, and to craft them, you need the essences dropped from rifts. Oh gosh, it is such a complicated system to explain. Okay, so basically, if you have essences, you can craft motivations and sell those on the trading post for a profit. It's kind of annoying because you will have to order a lot of other materials and you'll have to do a lot of crafting, but it's pretty profitable currently. Do be aware that as this video ages, this farm might get a little bit less profitable. Right now, as I am making this video, you can farm tier 1 rifts for about 21 goals an hour. Whether you yourself use motivations on this tier 1 rifts doesn't really change the gold per hour much. That is pretty solid, but it's not amazing compared to some of the other farms we've talked about. However, there are also weekly rift achievements, which will give you a lot of bonus essence. If you do these 25 weekly rifts, craft motivations and sell them, that is currently about a 40 gold profit. Not bad for something that you can do in about an hour. The worst part about rifts farming is that there is a lot of crafting and material buying to do. For maximum profit, you really want to buy order your materials and you want to put sell listings for the motivations you craft. You will also need a lot of research notes. You can check the fast farming website to see which craftable items get you the cheapest notes. The link is in the description. Doing one hour of weekly rifts farming is a solid way to make goals. And after you're done with your weekly, rifts farming is still pretty alright, but not amazing. Number 3. End of Dragons Metas Our next farm is one of my absolute favorites, End of Dragons Meta events. These metas are not like Dragonfall or Drizzlewood. No, instead they happen every two hours on a timer, and your first time doing them each day will net you the most rewards. Dragon's End will get you about 17 gold, Giala Delve gets you about 15 gold, and the other ones give you a couple gold. This seems pretty alright, but not as good as some of the previous farms that we have discussed. So why is this number 3 on the list? Well, End of Dragon's Metas have an ace up their sleeve. Imperial Favor. Imperial Favor is a currency which is needed for crafting End of Dragons precursor weapons and also legendaries. And a lot of players don't have enough of this. This means that if you have a lot of favor, you can craft precursors and legendaries and then sell those to other players for a premium. The easiest way to convert your favor into gold is to craft precursors and then sell those on the trading post. For more info, check out my previous video on converting currencies. The link is in the description. The point is, you can convert your favor into a, a lot of gold, and this makes End of Dragon's metas extremely profitable. If you take favor into account, Dragon's End will earn you about 25 gold in about half an hour. That is 50 gold an hour! Now, you can only do Dragon's End for about 30 minutes each day, but that makes Dragon's End arguably one of the most profitable things in the game right now. Giala Delve is really profitable as well, and the other EOD metas are also pretty good. But again, for these metas, a lot of the value you earn will be in the form of Imperial Favor, so make sure to go craft and sell those precursors. Number 2. Corna Day Fishing 
Our next gold making method is probably the most relaxing one on the entire list. It is something that's great to do while you're watching Netflix on your other monitor and you can do it for hours on end. In my opinion, the second best gold farm in the game is fishing. When you fish, you have a small chance of catching a legendary fish. A legendary fish can be turned into ambergris by double clicking it, and ambergris fetches a really nice price on trading posts. Apparently, I'm supposed to say ambergris. I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. The trick to making lots of gold with fishing is to go for the highest legendary drop rates. And currently, the highest legendary drop rate is fishing in the desert during the day with scorpions as baits. If you do this, you'll want to max out your fishing power by using a good lure, having all the masteries and also using fishing foods like whitefish sushi. You also want to get 100 fishing streak stacks, which you can get by catching a 100 fish in a row, or you can instantly obtain it by teaming up with someone else who has 100 stacks, or you can eat 4 zephyrite fish jerky. With your fishing power all maxed out, you now want to go and fish. The two most popular spots are the Crystal Oasis and also the southeast of Korna. In Korna in particular, there are a lot of fishing nodes close together. Just sit down, relax, and go catch some fish. You can actually speed up your fishing a bit by using the skimmer instead of the skiff to move between fishing nodes. But do be careful, if you're off your skiff for too long, your fishing stacks will disappear, so you really have to be fast. The one downside here is that you can only get this amazing legendary drop rate during the day. This means that once it's dusk, your gold income will plummet. But as long as you are fishing during the day, you can expect to make about 32 gold an hour. This is quite frankly ridiculous for how easy this is to do, and there is no limit to it. As long as it's day, you can go fish. Now, of course, there is a lot of RNG involved with fishing. You might get super lucky for a bit, or super unlucky, but in the end, as long as you fish a lot, your luck should eventually even out, and you genuinely should be able to hit that 32 goals an hour. With fishing, what a time to be alive. And now, it is time for, in my opinion, the best gold farm in the entire game. Number one. Tier 4 Fractals. Tier 4 Fractals give you a ridiculous amount of gold, and they are, in my opinion, the best gold farm in Guild Wars 2. If you're unfamiliar, the Fractals of the Mist are small dungeons, and each day there are three different deities. There are four tiers, tier 1 being the easiest and tier 4 being the hardest. The higher your tier, the more rewards you will get. It can definitely take a while to work your way up to tier 4. You have to level up your fractal level one at a time, and you also need to acquire Ascendant gear to survive in the higher tiers. But once you do make it to tier 4, you have access to, in my opinion, the best gold farm in the game. It is so worth it. Tier 4 fractals might sound hard, but I have to stress, 99% of the time they are smooth sailing. People who have made it all the way to tier 4 are usually quite experienced, so usually you can finish your free dailies in less than half an hour. The other day I did my free dailies in 23 minutes and I made 21 goals. That is roughly 55 goals an hour, which is the highest number I found in all my testing for this video. Not only are Fractal's amazing goals, but they are also, in my opinion, just really fun. There are a lot of different Fractals, so they don't get repetitive very quickly. I would much rather blast through a couple of Fractals once a day than grind Dresselwoods for hours and hours. I try to do my tier 4 dailies every single day, and over time, that daily goal really adds up. One week of tier 4 dailies is almost 150 gold with just 25 minutes of playing each day. If you want even more fractal goals, and if you are down for a challenge, you can also choose to do the 4 challenge mode fractals. This will get you another 13-ish gold, but be warned, the challenge modes are much harder, so often groups will take quite a lot of time to do these. If you're in a good group, definitely do the challenge modes too, but if you just want to get in and earn some quick gold, skipping them is absolutely a valid option. 
And there you have it, the top 10 gold farms in Guild Wars 2. This video actually took quite a long time to put together because we had to go and try all of these gold farms. I gotta say though, I made a lot of goals while making this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like Guild Wars 2, definitely check my Twitch stream over at twitch.tv. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.